But I couldn't do With plenty of money and you in spite of the worry and welcome back in your this morning it's like the closing bell on Wall Street could be losing its ring to cutthroat competition among online brokerage firms. Many now offer after hours trading online trading giants like discover and drive offer this with some limitations on Dis offer the service with some limitations on discover traders have to specify the exact price they'll pay or at what price they are willing to sell. Nearly all online trading firms are expected to offer after hours trading by the end of this year. This is one of the biggest money making times of the year for retailers. It's of course back to school time. It's especially profitable for shoe stores. One reason for that, kids are willing to pay extremely stiff prices for those designer shoes. And speaking of going back to school, college kids just got back to campus. But airlines are suggesting that they go ahead and make their travel plans for the holidays, especially New Year's Eve. Prices are sure to go up because of all the coming and going that we'll be doing this New Year's holiday. After all, everyone, it's, it's the, the last, last New Year's Eve, Eve of, the, of millennium. the millennium. And we're very excited about all these things. Well, that was the last <laughs> minding your business of August, so now back to Jordana. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Jim. You know, college freshmen definitely have a lot to learn. That's the conclusion of a new study done at Belliot College in Wisconsin. The study found out what college freshmen don't know, or at least don't remember. You know, they don't remember Walter Cronkite ever saying, and that's the way it is, to end his CBS newscast. And they, and they think the moonwalk is a dance step instead of a giant step for mankind. And for this year's freshmen, singer John Lennon and comedian John Belushi have always been dead. And they never heard anyone say, book them, Dano, or Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Sue Ellen. I don't remember the next name. On primetime <laughs> television. And chances are they have never feared a nuclear war because the study says last year's freshmen claim the day after refers to a pill, <laughs> not a nuclear war movie. <laughs> You know, I'm feeling awfully old this morning. Cody. I know. I feel like you should like hike your pants up when you're Seriously, talking about that. Ain't that like the moonwalk with Michael Jackson? 54 in Eagle Creek right now, 51 in Shelbyville, 54 in Anderson. We have a few high, thin clouds kind of rolling on through. As the day progresses, we'll get rid of these clouds and we'll be a mostly sunny and uh, mostly beautiful kind of day. Is my tie crooked? There we go. No, that's what's right. <laughs> it's so weird today. I don't know what it is. Here is uh, what's uh, left of Hurricane Dennis. He is now weakening just a bit. Maximum sustained winds are about 85 miles an hour. He is going to get stuck. Basically, he's going to weeble and wobble just a little bit, maybe go a little bit to the north, and then get stuck right off the coast, all thanks to this area of high pressure, the same area of high pressure that's been bringing us the beautiful weather is going to force it to just kind of get stuck right there. So look for a humdinger in the weather forecast today. It uh, looks like mostly sunny skies. And uh, what, Jim? Well, your, it's your hair. Oh, it's my hair? Yeah, your tie's fine, but... There you go. There you go. <laughs> Should you be doing something, reading something? Wednesday is a little bit warmer. We're talking about mid 80s. Mostly sunny, 79 degrees. Winds out of the southeast, about 10 miles per hour tonight. You're looking for a low temperature of 56 degrees, so mostly clear and cool. And your five-day forecast looks really, really good. We're talking about sunshine all the way through Thursday, maybe a few clouds for Friday and Saturday, but it will start to heat up. Joni. Jim, I think my scarf's crooked. <laughs> you get to fix that. If you're not busy within the next few seconds. Just, uh, Thanks, Cody. God, you guys are so helpful on this show. <laughs> That's what we're here for. I scared Cody. We're going to try to help you get around uh, the roadways this morning. If you're at 46th and Moeller, you won't be able to use that intersection because of a blown transformer. Fire gear on the scene there, so just be aware of a lot of activity happening. Over on the east side, of course, it's the dreaded cone zone, and already for northbound 465, especially just past 70, you're going to run into quite a bit of traffic already. Fox 59 Jam Cam taking a look at the south split, where things are just fine for the drive right now. Everybody there, oh, at least driving 55 to 60 miles per hour making their way through the south split without any problems at all. So it uh, looks like you still need to keep the headlights on for just a little while longer, and we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Jim, Jordana? All right, thanks, Joni. Well, your Indianapolis Colts are getting ready to host a homecoming, and it's one that tops this morning's sports flash. That's right. The Colts hold Seattle Thursday at the RCA Dome, and a familiar face will be on the opposing sidelines. Derek Mays took his skills from Indianapolis North Central up to Notre Dame then further north to Green Bay, and now he's heading to the great northwest, Seattle. The Seahawks traded for Mays to help their receiving core survive the holdout of Joey Galloway. And they also have Sean Dawkins, former Colt. Well, are you ready for some baseball? Cincinnati beat the Braves yesterday 11-3. Finally, it was the Reds' first win over Atlanta this whole year, and it's almost September. 
I'm not That's mad time. about this at all. Yeah. Sean Casey and Jeffrey Hammonds each tallied two run homers. And also, especially for me, Red Sox starter Pedro Martinez won his 19th game yesterday, striking out 11 in six innings. Boston beat Casey 9-1. And finally, the Indianapolis Indians are making their final games of 1999 ones to remember. After two straight walk-off home runs, Phil Hyatt and his, had his chance at turning the trick. Indians down one with a man on and two outs. And Hyatt sends it deep. Louisville Lyle Mooton makes an unbelievable catch to end the game. The Riverbats beat the Tribe 7-6, to six, and that is this morning's Sports Flash. At least it was exciting. <laughs> the name Lyle Mouton brings up a funny memory. It will be yeah. quick, I promise. That's okay. You know fantasy baseball? Sure. I know it well. My husband's the commissioner. Yeah. Well, you have a draft, and this guy I know picked him fourth overall a couple of years ago. Yeah. Oh, and now he's in AAA. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> pick. Even I would know not to do that. Yeah. And in this morning's Star Report, his saintly excuse couldn't save him. The owner of the Cowboys still lands himself in handcuffs. And how do you replace a TV legend? Producers decide the future of Siskel and Ebert at the movies. Maybe you don't. Also, Shireen's looking into the future of tourism this morning at Pan Am Plaza. She'll tell us what's attracting people from all over the Circle City next.